Today you will hear the story of Lloyd Montague. Listen how God brought him from a near-death experience and place him right back on his feet. Remember to leave a thumbs up for this video. Remember to click that subscription button below. Click the bell that says all so you'll be notified when I upload the exciting videos. And remember to share this video so you can encourage and empower a friend. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We serve a awesome, a wonderful, a pleasant, a great God. Yeah, true. A God who knows our today. Mm -hmm. He knows our tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He knows our yesterday. Mm -hmm. If we just leave ourselves daily to be led by Him, He knows mm -hmm. what plans He has for our life. Mm -hmm. My stories, my testimonies are many. I've seen many, many moonlights. But let me share just one. Yeah, maybe yeah. one of the most recent ones. Mm -hmm. When God actually put me to rest. Mm -hmm. Put me to rest. It was a Thursday night. I'm, I'm a very actual person in church. I like to help out in whatever way I can. I remember this Thursday night I planned to make some pudding for church so uh, I got my potatoes and whatever I went home I grated my potatoes and uh, finished my grater in and was just washing the things at the sink suddenly I feel my tongue begin to move a real funny way I didn't like the feelings of my tongue and so, while I was there, I'm, I, I can remember trying to finish the dishes I'm doing, but at the same time trying to straighten out my tongue. Mm. Suddenly, my wife came out and I don't know what caused her to come and see me that time, but she came out and she asked me if I'm okay. Yes, I wanted to answer her, but my intention was to get my tongue all straightened out so i didn't pay her much mind she said okay you don't want to pay me no mind and she walked off still there trying to get my tongue all straightened out nothing was working my way my friends i was just about to hit the ground just about to hit the ground suddenly there comes my wife again and she was just minutes to catch me from falling on the floor there she helped me to get down and I got down on the floor that's all I knew until a couple of days later I yes I remember I remember when because I was I was living maybe just a stone throw away from the hospital so she called for the paramedics and they came over and uh, you know they got me in got me to the hospital I know nothing then I knew nothing nothing mm -hmm. until a couple of days after I remember a nurse came in and wake me up and say Lloyd wake up wake up we're going for a walk that's the time I know that something was wrong I, I didn't know what day it was I knew nothing absolutely nothing but we went for the walk after doing the walk I remember they take me from that room and put me to a different room but I recognized that things wasn't okay with me at all my speech wasn't right I couldn't I could I, I couldn't give a, 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 a literal story for myself I, I couldn't explain myself and so I went to a room they put me to a room and uh, after they put me to a room in the hospital 
then I started to see people coming in, checking in on me, and I, I, I think this happened the Thursday, but I think I knew something maybe about the following Wednesday. So I don't know how long I was in that coma for. I was in a coma, a, a terrible coma. The story, the, the story is long because what happened during that time, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to ask my wife. And sometimes when when I want to catch up on what really took place, I called my wife. I said, "Come, come here. Tell me again. What? After I went to the hospital, what happened?" And she told me that I got there. I wasn't speaking. They have me there and um, mm -hmm. giving me medication and whatever, mm -hmm. but they they were just intended to cut my head. Mm -mm. That was the intention of the doctors to cut my head because they said there was a blood clot in my head in my my brain, mm -hmm. and their plan was to cut my head to have it removed. Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, after asking my wife to tell me what went what really went on. Mm -hmm. She said the, 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 the doctors were planning to cut my head. Mm. To cut my head. And every time every time I talk about it, it just brings tears. Mm -hmm. Tears because I I I I know nothing. I knew nothing. I don't know I don't know what was happening to me. If God was speaking to me but I wasn't listening, I wasn't hearing him. Well after after um the doctor was trying to, to cut me, they came and wake me up and that's the time they took me for the walk after doing that walk then I recognized that things began to get better mm -hmm. but they, they took me from the hospital after a certain time spent in the hospital they took me to a rehab center mm -hmm. for re rehabilitation the rehabilitation, that's where I recognize that I'm totally messed up mm -hmm. I was I, I was calling I mean at the, at my job I I used to do cash register so I I know money I know a penny I know a dollar I know all the, all the mm -hmm. coins right. I know them properly mm -hmm. but at this time I couldn't tell what was a penny from a nickel or a dime I did I could I didn't know it my brain was all messed up and I tell you Sometimes when I when I go for for um, therapy, and I realize my condition, I'll be calling a pin. I look at the thing. I know it's a pin, but I'm giving it a different name. My brain was totally totally messed up. But my brethren, within about a four weeks period, I think I spent about four weeks at that rehab center. I begin to make such a great change. God wrought some miracle in my life. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the therapists, they were, they were astonished to see how complete I was after such, after such a short time because my, my, my brain was totally, totally messed up. But I'm thankful to God that within X time I could go back to work doing my cash register just the same after being messed up so much doing my cash register just the same and here I am today I am not what I used to be mm -hmm. I'm not what I want to be mm -hmm. but I know that God has wrought a tremendous miracle in my life mm -hmm. in my life and to, to get my story real mm -hmm. to get the real part of my story mm -hmm. You have to hear from the people who was attending to me or who mm -hmm. came to the hospital to mm -hmm. see my condition. I knew nothing. Within those days, mm -hmm. I knew nothing. I could understand nothing. Mm -hmm. During the COVID se um, section here, during the COVID uh, process here, a good friend of mine called me. She wanted us to find out from me what it was like when you get the... the uh, no, the, 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 uh, when you get the, the machine, when they put the machine to your head and all these strings. A friend of mine came to me and she asked me what, it, what's, what it's like when you're having that ventilator. I said, ventilator? 
She said, yes, you had it on when you, when you were sick. As a matter of fact, the sickness I had was a stroke. That's what I had, a stroke. She said, what is, what is it like when you have that ventilator in? I said, Vent I said, did I have a ventilator in? She said, yes. You had all those strings, strings all over you. From your mouth going down your throat. What? I said, what are you saying to me? She said, yes. So I used to go back to my wife again. And find I said, tell me something. Did I have a ventilator on while I was in the hospital? She said, yes. You know, that, that brings another process of tears again to me. To know that I was on the ventilator. Mm -hmm. That was what kept me mm -hmm. for those days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those days that I didn't know nothing. It was the ventilator. And thank God today, here I am. Yeah. Here I am. Here I am. I'm so grateful to God. I don't know what his plan is for me. I ask him day by day because today I as I said I I can't do as much as I used to do before mm -hmm. I cannot do as much as I used to do before mm -hmm. but I I am doing all I can mm -hmm. with my children mm -hmm. with myself mm -hmm. and whatever I can do mm -hmm. to finish this gospel I remember I remember back in my earlier days I spent a lot of time doing canvassing canvassing going various places I used to go Narbrook I used to go Irish Town I used to go Ma but I, as a matter of fact I started from a, a young young youth with my grandfather mm -hmm. a young youth with my grandfather going to Mavis Bank Ginger Peace Hadley's Gap all these places I have done a lot of work as a missionary since I started singing that's where I do a lot also. I, I, I spend a lot of time singing various places. Various places. In the UK, I've done a lot of programs in the UK. I've done a lot of programs here in the US. I've done, I've done a lot of programs. But it seems that God has something left for me to do. So as I go from day to day, and I know that soon and very soon, this life will be over. I'm looking and hoping, like many not doing this day, people are planning and making plans for accumulating big houses and yes I was in that situation once, people are making plans for a big car, a big this, a big that, but let me tell you, I'm making plans to meet my God, to meet Him in death, because a lot of people don't worry about death today. People don't consider that death is real and death can come your way anytime, anyhow. Just as those people are dying today from the COVID, any one of us, any one of us, any one of us could be in that situation. So I'm looking for and hoping for death anytime. But most of all, I want to be a part of God's kingdom. So day by day, I'm asking God to just help me help me not through my will but through God's will through God's power grant me a place with him in his eternal kingdom when he shall return this testimony with many others many others I can testify to God's people today telling us look up or redemption draw it nigh.